This is video 1.3, uh, and I've actually decided to split this section into three separate videos because I felt that putting everything into one video would just be a little bit overwhelming. So this is just an introduction to statistical studies. What is a statistical study, or why do we have them? Well, in the real world, we use statistics to either answer a question or gather knowledge about a particular subject. And in order to do this in a way that our results can be trusted and verified, we have to follow the process of a statistical study. So there are four steps. The first step is determine the design of the study. So what question are we trying to answer? In other words, why are we doing the study? What is the population? Who is it that we are going to be studying? And remember, the who does not have to be a person. It can be an animal or an inanimate object. And then what variables will we record? And then what is the sampling method? This is the how. And what I did for this particular section is I looked at these first three questions and we're going to look at those in this video. The sampling method I've split into two videos. So I'm going to look at observational studies in 1.3.2 and experiments in 1.3.3. The other steps, collecting the data, organizing the data and analyzing the data, we will hit along the road through this course. Let's take a look at a sample statistical study and answer some of these questions together. Let's imagine we want to understand the significance of walking to reduce heart attacks. The goal of the study is to determine if walking 30 minutes per day will reduce the occurrence of heart attacks. So again, we're looking at the first four parts of question one, and that is to determine the what question we're trying to answer, what's the population and what variables will we record, and we'll deal with the sampling method later. So what question are we trying to answer? Well, the goal of the study is to determine if walking 30 minutes per day will reduce the occurrence of heart attacks. That is the goal of the study. That's the question we're trying to answer. Will walking 30 minutes per day reduce the occurrence of heart attacks? What's the population? Well, it's not made clear in this little blurb, but we can imagine that we are looking for people who are at risk for heart attacks. So we're going to put that at risk for heart attack. Now, again, we don't know that for certain, but it wouldn't make sense that we're just looking at the general population of all men and women from age you know, one to 100. We're looking specifically at people who would already be at risk for heart attack and see if walking will reduce that risk. And then what variables will we record? Well, it would make sense that if we are looking at walking to determine heart attacks, we will record number of minutes spent walking and we'll recur, uh, record the number of heart attacks, hopefully just zero <laughs> for everybody. Now, what's the sampling method? Again, we'll get to that later. Let's take a look at another example. This one I'd like you to try on your own. Same kind of process that we just did. So when you're ready, press play to see how you did. So for this question, neurologists want to study the effect of vitamin C on nerve disorders. The goal of the study is to see if taking an intravenous dose of vitamin C will reduce the amount of ner nerve pain reported by patients. So again, the goal of the study is to see if taking Vitamin C reduces nerve pain. That's the question we're trying to answer. That's the why. What is the population? Well, again, it doesn't say specifically, but we're probably looking at people with nerve disorders. So the population would be those with a nerve disorder or maybe more specifically, um, a specific nerve disorder because obviously we can expect different medications to work differently on different nerve disorders. What variables will we record? Well, we're going to record the vitamin C dosage and we're going to record the nerve pain 
that's reported by patients. Those are the things that we want to see. Um, what changes what? Now let's take a look at the sampling method. As I've already stated, in the next two videos, we're going to spend a little bit more time on each of these, but this is just the brief overview. So there's two ways in which to collect data, either an observational study or an experiment. An observational study is just that. We are looking at observing what's happening. Now you can either observe at things that have already happened. That's a retroactive study where you're observing data that's already been collected in the past, or you can look forward, proactive. You can select members of the population and observe specific traits or characteristics about them moving forward. Um, when we're looking at an observational study, the drawback is that you cannot definitively determine cause and effect. You can only determine if two things are correlated or related to one another. So negatives with an observational study is sometimes it's difficult to find quality data for a retroactive study. Again, retroactive is when you're looking at data already collected in the past. So it could be that you can't find that data. And of course, the time it takes to collect data for a proactive study. For instance, does drinking milk as a child, you know, affect your bone density when you're 80? Well, that's an 80 year span. You have to watch student or children and determine whether or not they're drinking milk and then 80 years later look at their bone density. Then there's also the experiment. The experiment is the only way to determine a cause and effect relationship. And again, typically experiments are great, but experiments, uh, experimental results are only as good as the design of the experiment. So when we talk more about experiments in 1.3.3, you'll see all of the things that go into designing an experiment. Let's quickly just take a look at these two scenarios and determine whether an observational study or an experiment would be the best fit um, before we move on to studying observational studies specifically. So the first question says, we want to determine the average age of college students across the nation. Would we choose an observational study or an experiment? And of course, if we're just determining the average age, we're going to observe that. We're going to collect that data. So that's going to be observational study. We're not experimenting. We're not trying to determine cause and effect. Researchers wish to determine if the COVID vaccinations will help prevent severe cases of COVID-19. Again, this would be an experiment, which means we are applying a treatment and the treatment is the COVID vaccination and we're determining the cause and effect. So we're determining if someone receives a COVID vaccination, will that help prevent severe cases of COVID-19? That is an experiment. So up next, we are again going to look at the two types of studies separately. So up next is observational studies.